In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a simple platformer in Scratch. First, going to name our project Platformer Tutorial. Then we're going to say goodbye to the Scratch Cat and create a new player. So I'm just going to name this player. And for us, it's just going to be a simple, simple square. So shift to make a perfect square while dragging, hold shift. And I'm going to make it a nice bright red square, with a bit of an eye in the middle. Again, shift to make a perfect circle. And another circle inside of that for the little eyeball. Great, now we have our player. I'm just going to name this little guy. And now we need our platforms. So, you know what, I'm going to make this guy a little bit bigger. He's a little bit small right now. You also want to make sure that it's completely centered. So you want it, you want the player to be centered inside of the costume. Now we're going to have a new sprite called platforms. So, I think the platform is pretty simple. For this tutorial, it doesn't matter what color we're going to use, because we're going to be using sprite collision detection and not color collision detection. So it really could be anything you want. I'm going to make it, this purpose is maybe like a nice black. So, level 1. And in the beginning, we're going to set it to... Set the position to zero, zero. And now we have nice ground. Now, first things first, what we want to do is we want to have gravity for the player. So, delete my variable. And create a new variable called gravity and make it for this sprite only and set gravity to negative one in the beginning negative one is downwards so we're constantly be going to go downwards then create a new variable called y speed again for this sprite only now, Y speed is going to be the speed that we're moving down or up. And in the beginning, Y speed is going to be zero. But over time, we're going to continually move downwards. So forever. Change Y speed by gravity. Now, if you run this, Oh, not change Y speed by Y speed. Change Y speed by gravity. Now, if you run this, you're going to see it's going to go down towards negative infinity. But, we can also make it so that you can actually see the gravity. So, change Y by Y speed. And now we're just going to be continually falling downwards. So as you can see, it kind of looks like gravity. But we also need to add collision. So create a new custom block called Y Collision. And run without screen refresh. So plop the scripts that you just had in the forever loop over here. And then put the custom block in here. So, same thing as before, just now in custom block. And another thing you might want to do is you might want to have the player start at 0, 0. Now, if you notice some things are different, that's because I'm using Scratch add-ons, which is um, a Scratch browser extension. If you want, that's how you can get dark mode and a bunch of other fancy things that are nice. But just so you know, that's how I got this dark mode. So for the Y collision, one method you could use is 
to first check am I in the ground and right now the player is in the ground then if the player is in the ground move up one pixel at a time until we are not in the ground anymore so let's say we fall voom, we're in the ground one two three four five all the way until we reach the top so we can say we say repeat until not touching platforms change y by 1 okay and since when you hit the ground you stop falling set y speed to 0 now Oh, one more thing. Add an if block around this, because we only want to set y speed to zero if we touch the platform. So if touching platform, do this. So repeat until we're not touching the ground, and then set y speed to zero. So now we should have it. And then to add jumping, we can say, Before we check collision, as we say, if up arrow key pressed, then set y speed to 10. Now We, oh, one last thing. Actually put this before the change in Y speed. That's the thing that'll make it work. Now, testing it. You can jump. And one thing you'll see is that you can, kind of like Flappy Bird. And you can jump in midair. You can double jump, you can triple jump. But hold on now, we'll fix that later. Then... What we need to do is now add X collision. So X collision. Run without screen refresh. Similar thing to what we had before. Okay? And let's also modify the platform to make it test. So that's our wall that we're going to be testing for. So create a new variable called x speed for the sprite only again. And also create a new variable called x power. This is going to be how fast we move or x acceleration is how fast we move. So beginning set x power to one let's say set x speed to zero and we also need one final last variable which is x friction which is the friction. And I think it's good to set x friction to 0 0.8. So if you want, you can see these are all my initialized initialized values right here, just so you can double check them, make sure they're not off or going crazy. So now for the x collision, we're going to do something similar. We're going to check, oh, am I in the wall? And then if we are in the wall, we're going to move one pixel at a time out of it. So, first, if, right key pressed, then, change, x speed, 
by x power. Now you can duplicate this, but then instead, when we want to go left, we want to change by negative x power. So negative x power. Then at the end, change x by x speed. Now, if you try to run this, there are definitely going to be a couple of things that are wrong here. So first thing you'll notice, oh, need to run x, x collision also. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's really hard to slow down. We're basically on ice. And if I run into a wall, vump, I go straight up to the top. So, to fix this, we need to add collision in the x direction also. So first we're going to add friction. So what we can do is we can say set x speed to x speed times friction. So every time, x speed is going to be a little bit lower than it was before. And after a few frames, it's going to go to zero. This kind of like simulates the effects of friction in the real world. But this also means that you have the same amount of friction on the ground as in the air. But, you know, who really cares? It doesn't need to be that accurate. It just needs to be somewhat realistic. So set x speed to x speed times x friction. Then... If touching platforms, almost exact same thing we had before, repeat until not touching platforms, and you know, I'm just going to duplicate this, change this to x speed, and change y instead for x. Now, if you try to run this, you'll notice that there are a few things wrong also. So, the movement is working, but it teleports me to the other side. And I can't move once I'm on this side. So there are, um, oh, sorry, set x speed to zero. Okay. Now, if you run this, you'll notice that there are a couple things wrong. So one, I can teleport, and the exclusion only works for one side. This is because we only changed x in the positive direction, but we also need a way to make it negative. So if we're, if we're going this way, if we're going from left to right, we need to turn backwards. But if we're going from right to left, we need to turn the other way. So there's a pretty handy formula to figure out what the sign, as it's called, of a certain number is. And the algorithm for that, or the formula for that, is abs of n divided by n. So the abs of 10 divided by 10 is going to be 1. The abs of negative 100 divided by 100 is going to be negative 1. It's going to be divided by negative 100. Whoops. It's going to be negative 1. So it basically tells you whether it's 1 or negative 1. And to find the opposite, we can say the negative of it. And so... If we put x speed into this, this will return the opposite of x speed, but in only one pixel it, in only one pixel increments. So this will be the opposite of x speed. Now it'll work for both sides. 
which is um, pretty neat. Now let's get let's fix the problem that we noticed before in the Y collision script. Well, actually, first let's apply this same technique to the platforms or to the player. So one other small thing you may have noticed is that if I have a ceiling, okay, and I try to go up into that ceiling, it's going to teleport me straight to the top. There's no way, and it's actually the same problem that we had, which is we only ever go up for collision. So same thing. You can duplicate that, change all the x speed, Oops. change all the x speed for y speed. And change all the and change all the x speed for y speed. So now we should have no problem colliding with the ceiling. Now another thing we need to address is that right now our game is like Flappy Bird. You can just you can infinity jump, you can fly, and you can basically do anything. But, we need to fix this. So, create a new variable called airtime. This is going to be the amount of frames that we've been in the air for. So in the beginning, set airtime to zero. Actually no, set airtime to 100. But, if we ever touch the platforms, set airtime to zero, because if we touch the platforms, basically, we've hit the ground, and now we should not be in the air anymore. But, otherwise, change airtime by one. So, we can say, if up arrow pressed, and the amount of frames that we've been in the air is, like, less than five, so, if up arrow pressed, and the amount of frames that we've been in the air is less than 5, then, and only then do we jump. Now I'm going to create a new level to demonstrate this. Let me just... Okay. So, start over here, and now we can't jump in the middle of the air. And another neat thing is this allows us to have a type of game mechanic called coyote time, which means that even if we miss the edge just a little bit, we can still jump. So if you notice, I can still jump even if I've left. And this is really useful for not making it frustrating for players, especially for like speedrunning or parkour type games. Now you might not want this, so if not, just set and airtime is less than 2. And if you want a ton of airtime, you could say airtime is less than 100. But I'm going to make it like less than 5. And there's another bug that we may have encountered. So if I jump... Oh, and let me just move this down. If I, oops, let's get him out of there. Oh no. You also want to make sure the player doesn't start in the ground. But. You know what? I'm just going to change this. 
to negative 3. Okay. So, if we jump, you'll notice we're able to stick onto the ceiling. This is because we never checked whether it was the floor that we hit or it was the, it was the ceiling that we hit. Now, if you don't want to delay, disable this, this can be an interesting game mechanic. But for us, that's not what we want. So, we can say only set airtime to zero if, and only if, the y speed is, is wait, more than or less than, is less than zero. So, let's change that to less than. So, only if y speed is less than zero. Then put put airtime in here. And now we're no longer able to stick to the ceiling. Now this is just the basic platforming script. And keep in mind this doesn't work for a slope, so if I try to have a slope, it won't work. But I might cover some of this in later tutorials, like level changing and death. But for that, that's all this tutorial is. So um, thanks for watching, and hopefully you learned how to create platform mechanics. Okay.